Hello, everyone. I'm Sudeep Charles, and I head product marketing for Desktop at Chef. Uh, with me today is Chaitra, who leads the product management for this uh, product. Um, and over the next 45 odd minutes, we'll talk about an overview of endpoint automation, uh, how you can automate uh, you know, your endpoints and, and do it as code. Uh, we'll see how this paradigm can actually be orchestrated with uh, Chef Desktop. And of course, the benefits that you can derive uh, with this approach, right? So with that, uh, let's get right to it. Well, what is the concept of, of endpoint automation, right? It's changing. So usually this has always been on the server side, right? Uh, servers, workstations are all examples of endpoints that we've automated in the past, we continue to automate uh, now. But on the client side, uh, endpoints and devices also need to be automated. These could include you know, desktops, laptops, uh, loosely connected uh, devices, just kiosks, things like that. Uh, but endpoint automation is achieved essentially by deploying software solutions um, that enable organizations to be able to manage these devices well, right? And do this remotely. Uh, and such automation tools typically ensure uh, that systems uh, and applications that, uh, that they're managing, uh, the endpoints themselves are up to date they have a high availability and uh, most critical tasks uh, that uh, you know, can be done are done remotely via these tools. In addition, uh, endpoint uh, automation tools also provide a level of visibility and control, right? So uh, this helps your IT teams in A, identifying what the problem is, that's easier said than done, B, remediating it, right? And therefore in just doing this uh, effectively and remotely, uh, the team becomes more productive, saves and ends up saving a lot more time uh, than they would if they were trying to do this manually, you know, getting the, 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 the machine in, looking at it, and then uh, trying to fix the problem, right? So uh, that's a very quick overview of what endpoint automation is. Uh, but why do we need this? Well, there's a bunch of reasons, but I'll try and summarize them quickly, right? Uh, large IT teams uh, typically understand that customers' needs will surpass uh, what their competitors are offering, right? Uh, and the experience itself is important. Customer experience itself is very important. The large underlying bits of customer experience lies in having your endpoints um, fully functional, completely up-to-date, and very secure, right? And this is critical to most businesses. Uh, analytics and remediation capabilities go hand in hand. Uh, and 30% of IT operations activities, you know, from support to continuous engineering will be a significant portion of their overall time spent. Um, the other stat is of course, Gartner saying uh, in its uh, newest endpoint production uh, platform forecast that the global investment in endpoint uh, tooling and, and visibility uh, will reach about 13 billion um, to 26 billion in the by the time it's 2025, right? So uh, a quick estimate of increased spends as well. Now, what are the issues around endpoint automation? Uh, there are four of them. Uh, one, security. Uh, protecting mal, uh, you know, uh, endpoints against malicious threats is anyways going to be a difficulty. But COVID-19 and the pandemic basically ha hastened working from home, uh, and that exposed all of these endpoints to a, a range of threats. Um, and being you know, able to A, limit the threat surface, and B, remediate any issues that, and threats that, that your endpoints encounter is critical. Um, the other one is, of course, OS patches and updates. Uh, it, we're exceedingly seeing that patches and updates are now becoming more frequent. Uh, and maintaining device states being as up-to-date at all times is very important. Doing this with minimal user inconvenience and intrusion is also impossible, right? So trying to manage uh, user convenience and also managing uh, updates and patches, uh, doing this manually is, is a challenge, therefore automation and endpoint automation. Inventory management is another challenge, right? So a lot of us try and typically do this using uh, Excel sheets, not scalable, error prone, difficult to manage. Uh, then of course uh, is scale, right? You've got a large fleet, you're trying to manage all of this uh, across the globe, keep them all uh, you know, up to date and you're 
obviously the team is going to spend a lot of cycles just trying to make me you know ensure that the scale is managed and also um, machines are up to date there isn't any configuration drift, right so uh, that's typically what endpoint management has as challenges without uh, tooling to help you do this uh, which is where you can uh, use chef to automate your endpoints right so um, you could codify uh, the way you manage endpoints uh, and this is fairly simple uh, a chef client runs on a laptop let's say or, or any node on a regular basis and downloads configurations from a chef server um, and if there is a drift that's detected uh, you're able to then remediate the drift close the gap um, cookbooks which are essentially chef artifacts uh, which help these configurations to be um, executed uh, are all code abstractions uh, and they're very easy to read uh, they're very easy to configure and more importantly they can be reviewed as code uh, you know you could put them through a bunch of um, scrutiny and you'll still be you'll be able to version all of them uh, and ensure that all your changes are also validated in case there is some rollback that needs to happen you're also able to do that very quickly right all of that happens uh, with many tools but the best that we know being chef desktop and i say this not because i am speaking about it but essentially because one of those tools that offers you the ability to see um, your um, the state of your endpoints across operating systems whether it's linux windows or mac devices uh, but again, how does this help? Essentially, uh, when you are able to um, execute all of this using desktop or any other tool, uh, you're able to get comprehensive visibility. It's easy to manage because you're saving cycle time. You're able to remediate uh, issues very quickly. Uh, and therefore, there is also a continuous security and compliance uh, that is ensured uh, because, again, uh, easily certifiable, greater visibility. Um, and of course, with all of that, comes in productivity gains uh, that you and your team um, you know, end up getting. Well, with that said, um, I'll just, uh, there's, a, there's a couple of polls that are gonna come through um, through the webinar. The first one should appear now. Do take time to uh, respond to that. Um, and with that, I'll hand it off to Chaitra uh, who will get into the nitty gritty of um, you know, how this is done. Chaitra. Thanks, Sudeep. All right, so there are numerous ways to manage endpoints today, which come with both cloud and on-prem options. They come with uh, GUI using which you can create policies, configure settings, deploy applications, etc. right? Though they even come with a dashboard where you can visualize the fleet. These tools are great for both small and large businesses to get started with to bring your endpoints under control. They are easy to get started since they come with a you know a user interface. But while there are advantages, there are definitely gaps with these tools, which slows down teams and makes them less efficient. So let's take a look at what are these challenges that IT admins face. So creating policies and configuring settings with the user interface is an easy way to achieve things, but then they don't scale really well. When IT teams have a large fleet to manage, which require different configurations and settings. Often the configurations are hidden behind menus and options, meaning one configuration could have multiple manual steps involved, making the process time consuming as well as error prone. And when such mistakes happen, it is uh, hard to figure out, uh, figure what and who caused the issues. Or even if you want to roll back changes, that's not uh, easy to do as well. And then there are issues with respect to uh, ensuring that the endpoints are in compliance. IT teams can overcome these challenges by adding some automation into their endpoint management processes by using configuration management tools like Chef. The advantage of automating your fleet with Chef is that it can increase team productivity, reduce mistakes, and set standard processes in place, which all team, team members have to adhere to. So automating endpoint management with Chef actually scales quite well. That is. Let's say if the number of endpoints in your organization is growing, IT teams can continue to remain efficient. You can easily achieve custom configurations not available out of the box in these endpoint management tools. 
and then do uh, team or uh, user specific configurations, achieve con continuous compliance and get a visibility into the fleet with very little effort. So typically this is what the chef setup looks like when it comes to automating management of endpoints. So core tasks like zero touch enrollment, remote wipe or lock, uh, et cetera, are performed with endpoint management tools. These tools are also used for deploying chef client onto the endpoints. Once you have the endpoint management tools install chef client on the endpoints, chef takes over from there. Chef client ensures that all configurations are applied correctly and ensures that devices are in the desired state. With Chef, you are not only able to achieve automation, but uh, also uh, achieve continuous compliance with the single tool chain and process. So let me talk about what the Chef workflow looks like in this specifically. So all the conf uh, code uh, configurations are specified in the form of Chef artifacts called cookbooks, which has recipes defining different configurations. So these cookbooks are pushed to the uh, source code management repository like GitHub, which triggers the CI CD pipeline and the cookbooks uh, are tested and pushed to the chef server. So the chef client, which are deployed on the machines, pull these cookbooks and apply them onto the uh, endpoints. So chef client is configured to run periodically. So every time it runs, it checks in with the chef server and compares if the state of the device matches with what was originally specified. And in case it does not match, the configurations are applied again, ensuring that the device always uh, you know, remains in the desired state. So every time the cookbook is updated, it is tested and the latest changes are pulled by the chef client on the device. Even if there are configuration drifts uh, done manually by some user, the drifts are automatically corrected as chef clients run periodically, right? Uh, and and the, uh, uh, you know, the uh, it is ensured that the devices always remain in the desired state. The state of your entire fleet, the compliance test results, and all the changes done on your fleet can be viewed on a visibility dashboard. And you, you can use Chef to manage a device with different operating systems like Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. So uh, you'll see a poll question pop up now. Uh, do take time to respond to this poll, and we'll discuss the results at the end. <clears throat> Moving on to the next section, let me show an example of what a chef a cookbook and what a recipe looks like, right? So we'll, uh, all, uh, we'll also see how chef works uh, moving ahead. Here on the left-hand side, what we have is a chef repo with multiple cookbooks and each cookbook can have multiple recipes. And on the right side, what you see is a recipe which has a few chef resources defined for performing different configurations like screensaver settings, uh, descript, encryption, etc. So chef recipes are pretty much self-explanatory. You All you need to do is you need to pass a few parameters and how you want it to be configured and the underlying actions are actually taken care of by chef. Let's say you want to set the screensaver idle timeout to 10 minutes. The cookbook is pushed to the uh, chef server and the chef client installed on the endpoint pulls the cookbook from the server and applies the screensaver setting on the machine. And you can check and see that your screensaver idle timeout is set to 10 minutes, right? The status of your endpoint fleet, uh, the configurations that you've run, all these can be observed on a visibility dashboard. It shows the check-in history of a device, device attributes, stop errors, etc. And you can also view the details of the chef client run, uh, what are the cookbooks that were run, uh, what are the configurations that were successful, error logs, etc. So we saw how a configuration can be applied on the device with a chef cookbook and how one can view details of the client run on the dashboard. But how do you ensure the devices are configured the way you want them to be? Or if the settings that you configured get manipulated somehow, how do you uh, you know, bring the device back to the uh, desired state. So let's go back to our screensaver example, right? Uh, and assume the screensaver timeout somehow got modi modified by the user and it is now set to 15 minutes instead of 10 minutes. So what happens is in such a case, when the next chef client is, uh, when the uh, uh, next run of the chef client is scheduled to run, it 
pulls the cookbook again from the chef server and applies the configuration that is mentioned in the cookbook, which is 10 minutes, thus bringing the device back to the desired state. So chef is able to automatically correct your drifts and always you know, maintain the devices in the desired state. Let's now look at how you can uh, define compliance as code with Chef to ensure that your endpoint fleet is compliant. Talking about the uh, screensaver example, right? We uh, here we have an example of a compliance test which checks whether or not the screensaver timeout is set to 10 minutes. So if the timeout is indeed set to 10 minutes, the test passes, otherwise the test fails. So if you now update the recipe that we used earlier, uh, to set the timeout to set the screen server timeout of 15 minutes instead of 10 minutes, and then also write a compliance test that checks for the device's screen saver timeout period, and you push it to the chef server, the compliance test fails because we expected that the you know screen saver timeout should be set to 10 minutes, and this failure can be visualized on the compliance dashboard. You can also view which test failed and the you know the reason for why the test failed. The test was expecting it to be 10 minutes, whereas the device had actually configured it to 15 minutes. And hence we see the failure. So we have another poll question come up now. Uh, so please do take your time and respond to the poll. Moving on to the uh, next section, right? On where does Chef fit into desktop management? So Chef Desktop was a product that we launched uh, early 2020. It essentially uses the same components and technology that we use for managing and automating uh, server infrastructure. So Chef has you know, proven itself in the DevOps space for many years. And since there are benefits with applying DevOps principles to endpoint management, it is only logical that we extend Chef to managing endpoints as well. Even though the Chef desktop product was uh, officially launched uh, early 2020, uh, we had customers who were using Chef to manage the endpoints like uh, way earlier than that. And they've been able to manage like thousands of uh, endpoints with just a small team of uh, two or three people. They were able to do this because they were representing their endpoint status code and were automating most of the manual processes, which help them to efficiently manage a large fleet size at scale. So with Chef Desktop, you can drive efficiency through automation. By uh, automating mundane uh, you know, manual tasks, you can reduce IT setup tickets and uh, avoid mistakes. It enables faster time to productivity for employees. And then you can gain control over your uh, fleet, right? You can manage IT resources consistently across the enterprise. Uh, Chef can manage multiple operating systems uh, like Windows, Mac, and Linux. So basically, you'll be using the same tool chain and process to manage uh, all the three operating systems. And Chef really increases the efficiency of the team. Like you don't have to write multiple scripts to achieve a configuration. Uh, Chef uh, resources are you know uh, concise and uh, very uh, easy to read. All you have to do is pass a few parameters to set the configuration, and the underlying tasks are taken care of by Chef. And then finally, you can reduce security and compliance risks on your fleet by, uh, you know, Chef can monitor your fleet for compliance through CIS benchmark profiles, uh, which uh, is curated and provided as premium content by Chef, or you can write your own tests as well. And uh, any and all changes uh, can be audited through code uh, using Chef. With Chef, you can automate desktop management uh, via code that can be made pipeline deliverable. Uh, manage configuration through Chef curated content. Uh, like Chef provides premium content cookbook, which has recipes for most common endpoint management use cases. These recipes are available both with Ruby and YAML templates. Uh, uh, with Chef, you can detect when uh, uh, you know a laptop or desktop configuration drifts and automatically correct any uh, misconfigurations. Uh, like I said earlier, right? Chef client can be configured to run uh, periodically uh, on your devices. That way it can always correct if there are any drifts and uh, maintain the devices in the desired state. And you can also have customized extensible configuration controls to meet each organization's unique needs. Chef Desktop also comes with a visibility layer, which enables continuous visibility into the configuration status of the fleet. 
the uh, visibility dashboard shows the status of all the devices irrespective of whether it is Windows, Mac or Linux. And you can see how many uh, uh, endpoints have checked in, how many did not. You can also view the check-in history uh, and find out the status of your devices over a period of time. You can also you know, drill down for the view device specific attributes like OS version, status of the client runs, kernel version, uh, the cookbooks deployed, et cetera. And apart from this, you also have a compliance dashboard to view the compliance status of the fleet. And uh, Chef empowers uh, IT admins through uh, compliance, right? With Chef, you can consistently enforce security and company uh, policies with the curated content, or you can write your own uh, compliance profiles to meet customer specific compliance needs. So you can uh, basically continuously detect security or compliance issues and allow for automatic uh, remediation with Chef. Finally, what is it that Chef brings, uh, right? So you'll be able to do more with less resources. You, we have seen our customers managing like thousands of laptops with just a small team. With most of the process automated, there are just very few things that can go wrong. Uh, you can, uh, and you will not only be able to bring the fleet to the desired state, you can continue to keep them in that state by proactively monitoring the fleet and correcting non-compliant devices. And uh, since all changes are version control, you'll be able to track everything from who made the change, when the change was made to what are the changes that occurred over a period of time. So that makes, you know, debugging issues easier and faster. And finally, you have a single process and tool for managing configurations and, and uh, ensuring compliance of your entire fleet. So uh, with this, we've come towards the end of the webinar. Uh, uh, so, uh, you know, we can do a Q&A uh, session. So please feel free to post your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please feel free to ask. Great. Thank you, uh, Chaitra. There are a few questions um, and some very interesting ones. So let's get to it, right? Let's start with this. Um, do I need to know any scripting or any particular programming language to be able to use Chef? This is a good one. So uh, this, yeah, this is a question that we often get, right? So uh, although Chef uses Ruby underneath it, uh, we have created you know, a Ruby DSL on top of it with a lot of abstractions that you can use off the bat. So if you know any programming language or uh, scripting language with some basic Ruby, uh, uh, Ruby fundamentals, you should be able to uh, start using Swift. So you, you don't have to like, uh, you know, know, know any particular uh, language as such. Great, great. Uh, the next one is around configuration differences. So it says, um, if different endpoints have different configuration needs, uh, is it possible to address them with Chef? Yes, it is possible to do that with Chef. So you can specify attributes for different endpoints and then specify the logic in the recipe on what configurations you want to apply on nodes with those specific attributes. Or you can have uh, a different policy files defined for different teams and differentiate what policies are applied for different teams. That way you can, you know, uh, customize what each, what configurations each team, uh, you know, devices of each team get. Sure, sure. Uh, the next uh, question is, can we customize configurations based on the state of a device with Chef? Yes. Uh, so similar to the uh, uh, what uh, I said previously, right? Yes, you can do that. You can have custom configurations based on the state of the device as well. Uh, like uh, you can say, uh, do this configuration if the device has this version of the operating system uh, or a specific version of an application. Uh, uh, you know, let, let's say if the device has this specific version of the application, then do this. So all this can be headed in the logic and you can specify that in the recipe and do that, yeah. Awesome. So uh, to, to the others that are attending, uh, please feel free to uh, also put in your questions in, uh, in the Q&A tab. Uh, and there's one more that's coming. Uh, what is the most effective way to monitor desktop machines with Chef? Uh, if I want to see the list of processes, so CPU, memory, IO, 
uh, you know, the load on the device. Uh, where can I find them? Is that even possible? Yeah, so on the desktop dashboard, right, uh, there is a, 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 there is a section where you can view the device specific out attributes on the, you know, CPU version, kernel version, uh, the version of the chef client that was run. You can you can get that uh, information from the, uh, uh, you know, uh, desktop dashboard on Automate. Great. So this and, and, and... Is, you know, uh, underneath it, what happens is there is something called OHI on Chef, which actually collects these attributes. And, uh, uh, you know, we, we are displaying it on the desktop dashboard uh, for the users to see. Great. And, and yeah. uh, Automate for context is our visibility pane, right? So right. that's yeah. basically what offers uh, visibility across the suite of products that we uh, that we have to offer. But this is just for, yeah. for more context. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so keep those questions. Sorry, Chaitra. Yeah, so basically the desktop dashboard is on Automate. So Automate has, you know, different dashboards. It has a desktop dashboard, it has a compliance dashboard, it has an infrastructure dashboard. So all of these visibility uh, dashboards are on Automate and hence we used it as a like blanket term, uh, right? Or automate where you can view the uh, status of the fleet. Yes, great. Uh, do keep the questions coming uh, and we'll be, uh, we'll try and answer them as, as we go along. Uh, but can we have the first uh, poll question come up, please? And, and we can talk through uh, those results as well. Right. What problems are you currently facing uh, was the first one. Uh, it's almost an even split across yeah. uh, operating system patching, manual steps, uh, rolling back of changes and, and ensuring compliance. Um, and all of them are good problems to solve with yeah. uh, with with desktop. But sorry, Chaitra, you wanted to add? Yeah, I totally agree with you, uh, Sudeep. Uh, I think yeah, all of these uh, problems are you know something that can be addressed if you add some automation to your endpoint management processes. Uh, and given that you know security is more important than ever uh, uh, these days. Uh, you know, it is very important that, you know, uh, if there are any mistakes uh, or misconfigurations that you do, uh, uh, you know, they have to be rolled back as soon as possible or even avoid such mistakes in the first place by automating the uh, manual uh, tasks. Right. And I think the one thing that probably was implied, but I don't think was explicitly asked was, you know, how easily are you able to do this for the single pane of glass? Um, across operating systems, right? Um, sure. And I think uh, I'm assuming the question and the answer here, but I, I think the point is, uh, if you have uh, endpoints on different systems, on different operating systems, uh, you can still use Chef to get, you know, a unified version of the state of all your devices on that single pane of glass, uh, irrespective of the underlying operating system that's running on um, each of those endpoints, right? So uh, just just for more context, and this is something that we that we tend to uniquely offer as well. So um, great. Uh, could we have the second uh, poll response, please? Right. Do you have uh, any automation processes or tools in place? Uh, yeah, the overwhelming uh, response is yes. We have completely automated our uh, IT resources. And then uh, there is not an insignificant, it's significant, but hey, no, we are still doing stuff manually um, mm. and that's affecting our, our productivity. Uh, well, I think uh, for those that are using a tool, right? I think the questions that uh, one needs to answer is, you know, are you able to benchmark or able to, you know, use content that is benchmarked to be able to remediate uh, any drifts on your endpoints? Uh, is that something that's easily available? Uh, and to those that, you know, are not currently doing uh, something to automate your endpoints, uh, probably a good first step is invest in something that you can first try out without too much of an effort. Uh, and then scale uh, quickly once you see success. But uh, those are my two cents. Chaitra? Yeah, yeah. I agree with you, uh, Sudip. It's, it's interesting that, you know, uh, uh, if, if you've automated your, uh, you know, IT resource management, we'd love to know uh, 
how you've done and what are the uh, uh, results that you're seeing and uh, how are you doing it? We'd love to know that. Great, great. Um, and do we have another poll question? Yes. Yeah. Um, automation processes are, uh, yeah. Okay, are you using um, Chef today or have you used it in the past? Uh, this is a, a good one. So uh, the significant majority is yes, we've used it in the past, but essentially for compliance, uh, there is there are a few uh, who've used it for you know managing uh, end user machines, uh, for managing server and, and server side uh, machines, and, and that's for compliance. And of course, uh, there's also not an insignificant piece that's not used it as well. Yep. But hey, virt managing virtual desktops, uh, Chaitra, your thoughts? Yeah, so th this is interesting, right? So if you are already, if you're using Chef to manage your, whether it's virtual desktops or your server uh, fleet, uh, it's it should be pretty easy for you to uh, extend uh, Chef to manage your endpoints. Uh, because you're using the same tool chain and processes. Uh, but even if you're not, uh, uh, you know, Chef, since Chef comes with uh, code abstractions, it's pretty, uh, you can get started pretty quickly uh, with uh, using Chef. And uh, you don't have to write like all your cookbooks from scratch. Um, there is a huge community, Chef community out there, which uh, has open sourced a lot of uh, uh, cookbooks. And then Chef also gives uh, the premium content cookbook and uh, compliance profiles, which you can start as a base and then you can modify if there are any specific needs in your organization that uh, you would want to accommodate. Great. Uh, there's one more that's come. It's not necessarily a question, but more, I think, a comment. Um, and, and the comments basically, I wish I could see what nodes are assigned what roles. Uh, so I could call up a role and see the list of nodes to which this role is assigned. Try Got it. Yeah, so I think this is a good feedback. Uh, so uh, I would say, you know, uh, if you're, a, uh, uh, you, you should, if you have such uh, recommendations we should uh, there is a aha ideas portal where uh, customers can uh, raise such improvement requests uh, uh, please go ahead and file them we can we will take a look at uh, such requests but on the other hand again uh, because i i lack context to the question and the person that's asking the question uh, we're assuming that you uh, that you have a sense of how this works and and um, you know you know how uh, you know, the kind of data and detail that we offer. But in case you you do not, right, we'd be happy to demo that to you as well, right? And uh, in case you need, you know, a demo of some sort, uh, we're happy to reach out, do let us know uh, again uh, through the Q&A and, and I think we'll find a way to reach out to you and, and, and give you a demo if, yeah. if that helps. Uh, but I just yeah, want to make also, sure that, sorry, go on. Yeah, and also if you can expand on uh, what you mean by roles of the nodes, uh, that would uh, that would give us a better understanding. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Great. Uh, do we? I'll, I'll probably wait for a couple of seconds in case we have more questions. I think there's another question on the chat. Okay. Just give me a minute. Can we achieve the same results uh, with hosted instead of desktop? Very interesting yes. question. Yes, yes, you can, right? So like I said earlier, so Chef desktop essentially uses the same tool chain and process that uh, Chef, uh, that our customers were using Chef for infrastructure management. So you can use Chef hosted, but the thing is the visibility layer that you get on Chef hosted would be different from the visibility layer that you would get with Chef Desktop on Automate. Otherwise, uh, you know, writing cookbooks, uh, achieving that, con uh, you know, orchestration between the Chef client and the Chef server, all that would be uh, pretty much the same, right? Only thing is the dashboard would look different uh, on hosted Chef and uh, Chef Desktop. And uh, since uh, the Automate uh, is the, you know, uh, uh, visibility layer which is more improvised it is recommended that we you use uh, automate uh, with chef desktop visibility 
Uh, I would I would venture a few more questions here again uh, to the questioner. Um, you know, why host it? I mean, is it because you are trying to offload costs, uh, move to the cloud, um, you know, things of that kind? Uh, and if that is true, uh, there are other uh, offerings that uh, that you could potentially try. Um, I think there is the SaaS offering as well right. uh, that you probably will find to be more handy, uh, you know, as you go by. Uh, but again, only a, a suggestion uh, that maybe you you also yeah. look up uh, the Chef SaaS uh, offering, and I believe that it is in an extended beta. Um, and I think it's it, it, we'd be definitely happy to to have you on uh, if you want to try uh, that flavor of chef uh, and and see if that works right. So again, um, not directly linked to the question that you uh, that you asked, but something worth uh, exploring. Uh, I'm just checking if there are more questions. Great. So if I have chef posted, then can I ask my rep for premium materials for cookbooks? Uh, is chef SaaS different from chef hosted? All great questions. Um, I think uh, A, to your first question, uh, would you be able to get premium content? Uh, I think is a function of your licensing and Chaitra, keep me honest yeah. here. Um, and I think the best thing to do would be to ask your, uh, your representative Right. Uh, whether your licensing allows for that. Um, and if it does, I think there shouldn't be a problem in, in access to that. Uh, is Chef SaaS different from Chef Posted? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it's not an easy uh, answer to, to kind of give on, uh, on a call like this, except to say that Chef SaaS is far more consumable. Uh, it's easier to, uh, to provision the management of, of most of that configuration is taken care of by chef. Um, so you don't really need to, um, to really worry about you know, keeping those configurations um, up to date and so forth. But uh, in case you are interested, um, I think we can, uh, again, if you can um, probably drop us an email ID. If we have one, I think we'll end up reaching out to you. Um, and then, um, yeah, we will be able to email it to you. Um, I think your, your follow-up comment on can we, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely um, send, we'll have someone reach out to you um, with the details on Chef SAS. And I think if that, that, that should kind of help you um, through as well. Great, great, no worries, happy to help. Um, with that, I think we're done with most questions again. Um, Chaitra, just keep me honest here. If I am missing out on anything, I don't think we are missing on uh, Q&A. I think, uh, Dennis, the questions you have on, you know, how many nodes a current license is supporting, and that's something you should uh, be discussing with your sales representative. Uh, he, he, he will be able, he or she will be able to uh, help you better with that. It is a function of licensing, Dennis. Yeah, so, yeah, yes. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and Rosa, I think also some of the questions that you asked around um, uh, premium content, I think, uh, is also a function of the same thing, right? So, right. Uh, reaching out yeah. to your rep is probably um, uh, the best way to do it. And, and, and uh, Dennis will again try and we should have your. Um, email ID too. Um, we'll try and reach out to you uh, and see if we can respond as well, right? So uh, good questions and great conversation. Uh, but thank you so much, everyone, for your time today.